All right, I'll start out with some announcements for today. Like every day, today we're doing the noontime devotion. Tomorrow we will have it, and again next week, Monday through Friday at noon. Uh, tonight we'll, we'll live stream Sarah's Choir at 6.15 on Facebook Live. Sunday worship will be at 9 a.m. here on Facebook Live. And everything that we do here on Facebook Live ends up on our YouTube channel. So you can just look for Trinity Robizonia there and you can watch it again. Offerings can still be mailed in or if you are out doing activities of shopping, which would really be your only reason for going out, and are driving by, you can drop off your offerings here as well. In the left glass door, there's a mail slot. Um, also, if you have dropped your landline, call us with your cell phone number. We're trying to get a hold of people and just check in. So that would be great. Email us your email address. We're also reaching out with weekly updates through email. And in that weekly update yesterday, we shared about how we are joining Lutheran World Relief's 75,000 mask challenge. Um, Trinity is trying for 200 masks. That's our goal. So if you have questions or needing help finding supplies, call Gwen and she can help you out. And if you need groceries or meals, call us. If you need to talk to someone, I know we're a few weeks into this. Maybe you're getting annoyed with the people who are in your house with you or some of us who are home alone. Let us know. We can find you somebody to call that's not there with you and talk with them. Um, all, if you leave an, a message on our answering machine, we will get those even if we are at home. So leave the message. And then my quick thing before we open in prayer, if you happen to have a Spark Story Bible with you, go grab it quickly. You can join with when I read the story. So let us open in prayer. Eternal God, amid all the turmoil and changes of the world, your love is steadfast and your strength never fails. In this time of danger and trouble, be to us a sure guardian and rock of defense. Guide the leaders of our nation with your wisdom, comfort those in distress, and grant us courage and hope to face the future. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. So the scripture reading is based off of Matthew 6, verses 5 through 15. And we'll be reading from the Spark Story Bible on page 278. It's the Lord's Prayer. The disciples had seen Jesus do many amazing things, heal the sick, teach in the temple, and pray to God. They wanted to learn everything they could from Jesus. Teach us to pray, they said to Jesus. Out of all the things that Jesus did, they thought this was the most important. When you pray, Jesus said, don't be like the people who stand on the street and use big words, loud voices, and long prayers. Find a place where you can be alone. Then you will think only about God. And Jesus said this prayer to show the disciples how they could pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. When Jesus said these words, he was saying that God is holy and important here on earth and in heaven too. He was asking God to give him what he needed each day. Jesus was also teaching us to ask God to forgive all our sins, which God always does, and help us to learn to forgive other people. 
He asked God to help him remember to do what's right and not what's wrong. He finished his prayer by saying that everything in the world belongs to God forever and ever. Jesus taught the disciples so much about prayer. They never forgot how Jesus told them to pray or the words Jesus used to pray to God. I know for many of you, especially some maybe of the older generations, this was a slightly different version of the Lord's Prayer than you're used to. I mean, this version had you instead of thy, uses sin instead of trespasses, and ends with now and forever instead of forever and ever. I know so many differences between these versions, and yet, even in those variances between the versions, it says the same thing. I remember learning the Lord's Prayer as a faith-stepping stone. I think it was second grade, but it might have been third. Can't quite remember which came which year, because at my home congregation, from kindergarten through sixth grade, we had something we had to memorize. Jesus loves me. John 3, 16, Psalm 23, the Apostles created the Ten Commandments and the Beatitudes. And we would take class time in Sunday school to memorize, and then as a class, we would say it in front of the whole congregation on a Sunday morning. Maybe you can think back to when you memorized the Lord's Prayer. Maybe it's been so long that you feel like you've just always known it. And maybe, for one reason or another, it's something newer to you. In the Spark story, before teaching this prayer, Jesus talks about finding a place to be alone to pray. That struck me. And I've been actually thinking about that in regards to this prayer recently. As we get further into this time apart, I've had the opportunity to listen to what's being offered elsewhere. I've been able to tune into services from my home congregation in Missouri, to watch devotions from my college chapel pastors in South Dakota, and I've noticed an amazing thing. There's always the Lord's Prayer. This prayer that Jesus taught his disciples and that we have learned through the generations. Throughout the years since I've learned the prayer, I've said the prayer in many different settings, in many different churches, at camp, at seminary, out in a forest. But wherever I have been, I've heard other voices joining me in that prayer. Now it's an interesting thing as I join worships and devotions from home, provided through Zoom or Facebook, that now when I say it, I hear myself, not in the midst of larger groups, my voice not joining others. I mean, even before the stay-at-home order, there's been an interesting thing. It started to think about the Lord's Prayer. If you go into the women's bathroom here at Trinity, Maybe the men's, I'm not sure. There's a sign next to the faucets when you wash your hands saying, the Lord's Prayer is a great way to help you with the timing of washing your hands. But saying the prayer silently in my head, washing my hands, is something different than saying it out loud and not hearing anyone else with me. Yet, be reminded, as we join in saying this prayer, wherever we may be, whatever the circumstances, when we pray this prayer, even if we are in a room all alone, our voices join all who have prayed this prayer before us, 
Our voices join the voices of all throughout time and space. All who have prayed these words that Jesus taught his disciples and us. Let these words and this prayer be a reminder that you are not alone, that we are not alone. Now, the only way we can end this, let us join together wherever we may be in the prayer that Jesus taught us that has transcended time and space to connect us with all. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Now may the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Let the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.